Hey, it's time for another video. In this one, we're going to create the actual login accounts. We're going to use this orange button here called Create New Account. So when a person signs in, they're going to provide us their email address and password. The Create New Account button will be triggered, and then we will put this person into our database. So if we're going to make this work, we have to go look up some documentation in uh, Google's uh, web page here. So I'm going back to the Firebase uh, console. We haven't been there for a few videos. And uh, let's choose the authentication, or better yet, let's go up here where it says go to docs. And so go to docs is going to help us get some information on what we need to copy and paste. So uh, we've been this page before. This was the initial initialize your uh, application. And so this should already be in our code. But let's scroll down until we come to uh, authentication. Here it is, authentication. And we have several options. We're going to be looking at web. And we're going to try the getting started. So getting started is a really simple authentication module. It's right here. OK, so we're going to take this code here, which is the create new user. And let's uh, copy it. And let's switch back into our uh, HTML code. OK, under the part where it says scripts, we're going to have to tell this computer that we're using the script command. And that starts our JavaScript area. So how do we make this uh, function work with our current code? Well, we need to create a function around this. So I'm going to call this function um, sign in, how about? And we're going to have uh, two different uh, variables. We need to have an email address and a password. And then this function can be called from other buttons on the screen. So a little bit of formatting here. Okay, so now if we only had an email address and password, we'd be ready to go. What we need to do is uh, link up the code to a button. So in my form, I have this uh, button right here called Create New User Button. And so now you're going to see the importance of the IDs of these uh, buttons. So I'm going to copy this ID and let's go down into our code here okay and so we're going to be writing things with the jQuery library jQuery works like this you have a an event and then you uh, have a listener and then you call a function so this is the pattern of jQuery so in here this parentheses this first parentheses is a associated with something on the page in our case it's a pound sign and then a paste, which is the ID of the button that was above. So anytime that create new user button is clicked, that's what the event is, we're going to call this function here. So this function, we can simply say, uh, we're going to get the uh, two variables here. We're going to call this thing email. It's going to equal something and password. We're going to equal something else and then finally sign in we're going to call the function down here, the sign-in function. So it needs to have email and password sent to it. Okay, so now we still have to determine how are we going to get these uh, two variables. There's email and password. So that also comes from our form. So let's go back to our form at the beginning. So the uh, form up here at the top where it says create a new account is going to have a field called input password and input email. So let's put those both in our memory. So let's start with input email. Now when we uh, go back to here, input email is going to be equal to the field value. And so whatever we have in the field typed in will be put into this variable email. And what was the other one? I've forgotten it already, so I'll go back and copy. Input password. So I'm going to scroll back down. And this time we're going to use dollar sign pound input password. So remember the pound sign in jQuery means an ID. So this is the item on the page that has that unique ID. Now let's just check to see if this is working. So I'm going to put in a um, console.log 
and let's see uh, let's call it new user equals and let's put in a plus sign and let's do email and then another plus sign and then password so this is a little bit of a error checking to make sure we got things going right okay let's give this thing a shot I've got my uh, button listener I've got my username and password I'm also going to add a, a console message here in case there is an error so I have error code and error message in case there's something wrong with the password it'll probably tell us in the console what's wrong so let's um, let's go back to our web browser now and um, I'm going to first of all turn on our console so I'm going to more tools developer tools this is the uh, Chrome version of the console and uh, let's take a look at what happens here so I'm going to refresh the page and then I'm going to uh, type in somebody's address. So let's go Kim at Korea.com and let's see what happens if I create a random password and create new account. So it says here I've got an issue. Uh, I've got an error and then the, uh, the email or the console log tells me what it is. It says the given sign in provider is disabled for this Firebase project. Enable it in the Firebase console under the sign in method. So let's go back into our console and let's look at our authentication. So authentication for Hero Maker. Let's get to the right guy and let's see what happens here. So authentication has not been set up. It says here, click a sign, set a sign up method. So we need to go in here and look at all these different ways we can sign into Firebase. And all of them are disabled. So let's first of all enable the sign in using email and password so that should fix things let's go back and retry our sign in so I'm gonna keep the same email address and click create new account this time it appears like there were no error messages so let's go check out our database uh, let's go back into our console click uh, authentication and look at there there is a user it's Kim at Korea and we've got um, a little bit of information about it. So it looks like authentication is working, at least for the first part. Now I've only done the create new account button. The sign in with Google is still dead. So we'll probably save that for the next um, video. Okay, so now we're gonna figure out how to capture that name and put it into our uh, regular database. So let's go back into the uh, documentation and uh, let's keep scrolling a little bit here so here is another function that we're going to copy so we're back into the authentication documentation under getting started and I'm looking for this function here called on auth state changed and it will tell us who is logged in or w when a new uh, account is created so let's let's copy that and let's go see what that does so this is sign in and now I want to uh, paste here when the application senses that there is a new sign in it's going to automatically create um, this variable called user and so we've got a whole bunch of stuff so really the only thing that we have kept track of so far is this field called uh, email so there's nothing in our form for display name or verified email or photo so let's just simplify things for this app and we're going to knock it down to one item now I have this uh, current user variable here that is set globally it's outside of every other function and the reason why I want to keep it global is that way when there's a user signed in I can say current user which is the global variable is going to be equal to the user which is the current one being logged in and so I'm gonna just uh, do a console log and I'm going to say that uh, current user and I'm gonna use dot email and I'm gonna say has logged in and so that'll give us a little hint uh, to see if the app is working correctly so I'll save that and let's uh, refresh our page here and I'm gonna come up with something else I'm gonna say um, you at me.com and a long password and create the account 
and wait and it does say u.me has logged in so that means the function right here this function has worked so that means that this uh, current user variable can be used in other parts of the application uh, let's go take a look at our database and check the authentication and see what's been going on here so let's do a refresh and sure enough you can see all the people that I've been testing have been logged in so let's stop the video here the next one we're going to do is we're going to save these users in our database and then associate them with different heroes that they create